Hey guys, good afternoon. It's me, Callie. Today I'm going to show you how I made these cosmic boho candle holders based on a post from a page called Nifty. My daughter had posted a link on my Facebook page and I'll link their link below, but I took their idea and took it a couple steps further and created these really cool candle holders. So I hope you'll stick around and I'll show you how I did it. See you in a few. And this is what they look like all lit up. Stick around, I'll show you how I did it. Okay, so let's get started. First, we're gonna talk about supplies. You're gonna need some kind of a glass jar. I'm a big fan of recycling, so I'm going to use today, this was a jar that held some olives. Um, if you're anything like me, you save your big candle jars. Um, any kind of a glass jar that's going to be big enough to hold our candle. Okay. Now the next thing you're going to need is some, um, you can choose to use gel food coloring if you wish. I didn't go that route. I chose to use acrylic paint. So I just have an assortment of um, Americana and folk art acrylic paints. Use what you choose. We're also going to need some decoupage. I wish I could buy this stuff by the gallon. We're going to need some water, just a little bit. Definitely going to need some glitter. I just have an assortment here of some silver glitter. And I also have this really cool glitter that I got a long time ago. And it's very cosmic. It's got stars and moons. And yeah, I love this stuff. It's in like a sticky base too. Um, then you're going to need something to put the paint on. So I just have an old paintbrush here. You can use a sponge dauber if you wish. You'll also need some type of a small bowl to mix this in. I'm going to use some measuring spoons if you wish. I kind of eyeball everything, but I will give you some measurements. You're going to need um, either a pair of chopsticks or pencils, something that we can rest our jar on when we're done painting it so it can drip without touching. That being said, we're going to need something for it to drip into. So I have this glass bread pan and I'm going to put a piece of wax paper in it and we're going to be putting the chopsticks in here. And then when we're done painting our jar, just for, you know, it only needs to sit for five, 10 minutes. You're also going to need some type of a baking pan. I use this for all kinds of things, polymer clay, whatever, a dedicated baking pan. We are going to use some scissors. I'm using various pliers, wire cutters, uh, jewelry making tools. Going to use some um, this is really cheap wire. Um, it's probably like 22 gauge or something. Any kind of beading wire of your choice. I had some scrap rawhide or suede tie. Um, as far as embellishments goes, you can pretty much do what you choose. Um, I'm going to use some, I just have these on a little glass tray. Some jump rings. Um, I have assorted charms here. Some of these are from um, Happy Mail I've gotten. Some of them are from jewelry that I've taken apart. Uh, this was an old earring. You know, just take a look around at your stash if you want. You can do feathers. Okay, I'm also choosing to use some chain. I've deconstructed necklaces I've gotten at the auction. Um, you can use old jewelry, things you pick up at the thrift store or the flea market. So just assorted chains, maybe old necklaces you're not using. I already mentioned jump rings. 
I'm going to use my Krylon marker. Um, this is just a silver leafing pen. This is optional. Um, I'm going to edge the inside rim of the jar with this. Use what you want. I want to incorporate some of my homemade essential oil beads. And if you have not yet seen that tutorial, I will leave a link below. Check them out. And speaking of beads, I just have an assortment. See what you have laying around. Um, going to use a combination of those, maybe some wooden beads. And also, we are going to need some kind of a candle. Now, I recommend these, um, you know, I love real candles, but for safety's sake, you know, I got these at the dollar store. They last a long time. These are flickering, so I'm going to be using these in my project today. If you would like, you can use real tea lights. Um, I would make sure if you're using a real candle to use a bigger jar, like this candle jar, uh, so the flame is not so close to the sides. On a smaller jar like this, I would definitely use um, the LED. You don't want to risk the um, decoupage catching on fire. I'm not sure if that would happen, but if it got hot enough, I'm sure it would melt. So obviously use caution and safety when you're working with any kind of fire. You can avoid all that by using a battery operated tea light. So um, that's it for supplies. And we are going to preheat our oven to 170 degrees Fahrenheit and wash out our jars. And then I'll be back and we'll get putting this together. Okay, the oven's heating up nicely and we're gonna get started. I have this little bowl here. I've washed and I've decided on the olive jar, so it's ready to go. And like I said, I'm choosing to use the acrylic paint. If you choose to use the gel food color like they show on Nifty's page, um, they just say color, you know, as much as you want. So I tried to use actually a lot and I didn't like the results, but give it a shot if you want a couple of squirts of gel food coloring. Or, like I said, I'm using some of this Americana Deco Art Satin. I stuck to like blues and purples. Um, I'm just doing a squirt, you guys. It's probably like a tablespoon. Let's call it a tablespoon. And then I'm going to take the decoupage. And we actually will measure. I don't know why for the video. And we'll do one two I'm going to add some glitter use as much or as little as you want I'm just pouring some in there it's probably about a teaspoon or so all right and why not we'll use some of this this is more like a glue glitter glue love this stuff look at that so we'll just drip some of that in there too I'm sure you could use glow-in-the-dark glitter anything these are a lot of fun to make okay so now that we have that we are going to add it just said a little bit of water experiment. I, you know, did this and I added a little too much at one time. Um, we're just going to do, I don't know, about a teaspoon. How about that? And then I'm going to give this a really good mixing. And just this alone looks... So beautiful. I don't know if you can true really see it, but okay. So that's it, you guys. And like I said, if you use the gel food coloring, just do it until the color reaches the way you want it to. I have some others mixed up here. I have a lighter blue. Um, this one is, you know, I added a little too much water, but these all have glitter in them. Here's more of a fluorescent purple. That was this uh, folk art fuchsia or something. 
and then I have a darker blue as well. So I kept it very galaxy themed, but if anyone who knows me knows this is my palette. So use the colors of your choice. You could do one kind of a Halloween one if you want right now. It's autumn, you know, black and orange or, you know, seasonally, whatever you want, you guys. Um, we're just going to begin and we'll, I'll start with the one. This is so simple. All right. We're going to take our brush or dauber or whatever you're using. And we're just going to randomly kind of splat it in the jar. Now you want your paint to be kind of runny because it is going to be dripping so just randomly and obviously you want colors that are going to mix well together um, check your color wheel if you're unsure because otherwise you'll just make mud but I know that these colors will all blend nicely and doesn't that look cool even just like that now obviously you guys these jars should never be used for drinking or storing of any food in them or anything like that. And you just kind of keep adding your colors until you're happy with the way it looks. And, you know, you can go back and forth. If you're not happy with it, just try to add a lot. Splotch it around. You may not see the glitter that you've added as you're doing this, but trust me, it's there. And the water does help make it. There we go. Now we're starting to get some action going on. Do the inside lip if you want. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of roll it so we can coat the inside of the jar. You can see what it's doing here. Um, and I'm going to continue to add some more here. All right. Just because I, I don't want any spaces in my... Um, jar once we're done. I want it to be fully coated. Get some more of that purple action going on. So you'll go back and forth and you'll contaminate your colors like I just did. Um, but play around with it. It's part of the fun of using recycled jars and things. You're not really wasting anything and it doesn't use a whole lot of paint. So just play with it until you're happy with it. And then we are going to, I'm pretty, I'm pretty good with this right now, you guys. It'll continue to drip down um, when we do this next part. So um, I don't know how good the camera's picking up, but it's super swirly and looks really pretty. So, and you can see the glitter there. When you're happy with the way you have it, take your little bread pan or whatever you're going to use, and I've already put a piece of wax paper down here, which is what we've been painting on, so I'm going to steal that back. And there's our bread pan, and I'm just going to kind of put our chopsticks down here. And you're only going to let this sit for maybe five or ten minutes. Um, it's not so long, but you kind of want to balance this on the two sticks so the bottom lip isn't sticking, okay? So I'm going to let this sit for ten minutes and come back and show you what we got. And we're going to put her in the oven. Okay, it's been about ten minutes. And let's see what we got. It looks cool just like this, but it gets even cooler. 
All right, so we are now going to put this beautiful jar, if you're happy with it. If you're not happy with it, let it dry and redo it or wash it out and start all over. I, you know, I'm happy with it. So this over here and we're going to take our baking pan. Like I said, oven's at 170. Make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. Um, you're not going to drink or eat out of this. And we are going to bake this just like this for 20 minutes. When you take it out of the oven, don't touch it. Let it cool off. When that happens, I'll see you back here. Okay, guys, so this is nice and cool now. And at this point, if you choose to just stop what you're doing and use it this way, you can. The page that I saw for inspiration ended the tutorial there. They just put their votive candle in and it was good to go. I chose to embellish. You can do whatever you want, but I'll show you what I'm choosing to do. The first thing that I want to do is take my Krylon pen here. Again, this is totally optional, but I just want to edge the top. I'm trying to hide these little jar ridge marks so it looks less like a jar. Let's see how successful we are. I'm just edging this here. All right. And I'm going to take it a little bit down the edge as well. A lot of this will get covered up, but just for the part that's not. Just using the width of the pen nib as a guide. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. All right. So while that dries, which takes about two seconds, the next thing that I'm choosing to do is put some chain on. Now I told you I've deconstructed some necklaces that I've had in my stash. You could do whatever you want. I'm going to use this black chain to go around the this edge here. And then we're going to hang these chains from that chain. So I have a bunch of jump rings here. And I have a couple set of pliers. And I also have my glasses so I can actually see what I'm doing here. So the first thing that I want to do is attach this chain around here. Okay. So all I'm going to do is take a jump ring and open it up. Okay, I'm not a jeweler, nor do I play one on TV, but I work it out. I'm gonna put one end of the, in the chain. Hope you're seeing this okay. And I'm gonna make this as snug as I can. Take your other pliers or your fingers and just rock it back into place. You always want to go side to side with the jump ring and never pull it apart. And then I'm just going to tighten it a little and voila. Okay, so here's our chain. Now, the next thing, and that's mm, not as tight as I'd like, but it'll work out in a second because we're going to add more. The next thing I'm going to do is take one of these smaller chains and I'm going to link it to the jump ring that we just used and then pull it around and I'm going to just eyeball it, but I want to go around to the front. So it's like even with the back one. Okay. Like if we pulled it across the top, it would be even there. All right. So I'll do that next. You can use the same jump ring that you just used, which if I thought ahead, I would have thought better. And I'm actually going to do that. Um, I don't know how I can help you see this better here. And I'm just going to feed the end of this chain through this. And then we're going to repeat what we just did. Sorry for wasting your time. And there we go. Okay, and like I said, I want to kind of 
I'll eyeball it across the Great Divide here. And we are going to woo, put another jump ring right there and attach it that way. So let's do that now. I'll attach it to the chain first. Like I said, you guys, you do whatever you want. I'm going to eyeball it here and just choose a random link and close that up. All right. Now, that's just hanging down to the side for now. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side using the existing jump rings that we just used. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm not going to show you all this. I'm going to attach that here and then there. Okay, so it's the same on both sides. And then when that's attached, I'm going to take another jump ring. And again, we're going to eyeball it. But I want to pull it up so it's kind of in the middle here. And I will try to get it so it's even on both sides. So let's just do that now. Another jump ring that I just dropped. There we go. And uh, try to keep it as even as possible. And then we'll just grab it. Okay, so you get the idea, all right? I'm going to do the same on the other side, and I'll meet you back here um, when that's evened out, and we'll do the next step. Seems like it. Okay, so here we are, and I tightened up the top chain. It was a little loose, and I evened out the other chains, but basically, this is what we have here, and I'm happy with it. So the next step, again, if you want, I chose to do... I took some of this le leftover suede cording I had and some of my homemade essential oil beads that I will be using some frankincense and cinnamon on. Um, and I just threaded them. And for the purposes of this video, I've already done that. Okay. And I just took some random silver beads that I had, added them on the cord with the essential oil beads. And we're just going to wrap this around the jar. I don't believe in bows, but if you do, tie a bow. I'm just going to do a simple knot here. I hope this is coming. You can see this okay. All right. Again, it's decoration, and it's also kind of hiding some of those um, ridges in the top of the jar. So that's what that looks like. This could be the front. This could be the back. Um, whatever you want. I'm going to let this, well, we'll see. The next step that I chose to do was to add some beads. And this is where my beading wire came in. So... I left it on the spool and for demonstration purposes I just took some random beads can you tell I took my glasses off and strung them around until I had enough to reach around the circumference of the jar maybe you only want a few beads maybe you don't want any beads I don't know I wanted beads so I did that, and I have a strand here ready to go. When I had enough to fit around, I left some tails here, and I'm just going to kind of make it even with that other knot we just made. If I can, I'm not going to go crazy. Well, not today anyway. And... We are going to tighten it up. So 
I'm just grabbing these two wires. You can use your pliers if you want. And actually might be easier. Or not. Wait till they get really tight. Okay. And then you guys, there you have it. Okay. Now I also so just tighten it until you get it as tight as you'd like. And then you'll have a little tail here and just tuck it in. All right. Make sure nobody gets hurt. Um, so here we have this. Like I said, it could be front or back. You can make it interchangeable. And the next thing I want to do is add a charm. And I've decided to use this. And the same thing. We're just going to take a jump ring. I am going to add it to the front there. And you know what? Let me just cut off this little tail. It's a little bit more than I wanted. I'll tuck it under. I'm going to use this knot to my advantage here. I'm going to hang the charm right from here. Okay. So, take another jump ring. And I'm just going to use the existing wire. that we strung our beads on and close that up too. Okay. And you know what? I think I want to, well, no, that's pretty good. Maybe we'll shorten these up a little bit. So basically guys, here you have it. Um, I'll show you a couple other examples. What? <laughs> Here we don't have it. Use beads that will stay on. Uh, and, you know, if you do these, let me know. Tag me in your video or on your post and let me know. Um, I'll come back and I'll show you a few more. And give me a thumbs up if you like this video. If you have not yet subscribed, I would love it if you do. I make videos very frequently. I appreciate all of your feedback. Peace and love, and I'll see you in a minute. I'll show you what we got. Okay, so here you have it. And I changed the order around. I took the tie off, and I put the beads over the chain, and then I put the tie over the beads, just because I liked it better that way. But there's that one, and then I did two more. Here's a small one with a moon charm, and I just put the lid back on, but that has the silver lid as well. And that's just plain in the back. And then I have a big one too. That candle jar. Um, this charm was an earring that I deconstructed. Just beadwork on the top. And then I have the tie to this one in the back. And they smell amazing. And I am so pleased with the way these came out. So... I hope you like this. Again, give me a thumbs up if you do. Let me know if you decide to create some yourself. Take care, you guys. Peace and love. Talk to you soon. And here they are all lit up, you guys. The smaller holders have the battery-operated LED lights, and this large one back here has a tea light in it. I love how these came out. So I just wanted to show you how they were lit. Bye-bye.